this book here. It's called Inventory Report on Jurisdictional Status of Federal Areas Within the States, June 30th, 1962. Uh, this was for official use only. Now, the GSA is the General Services Administration. It works under the Executive Office as part of the de uh, Department of Defense, and it helps write the contracts for um, Defense Department uh, private and commercial contracts. The commercial contracts clause in the Constitution was intended to be for um, getting work on the military reservations done. Uh, so that it could comply, the federal government could comply with the um, ideas of federalism in the Constitution, such as building uh, post offices, post roads, and um, the other necessary buildings. So we go and we get this book from Hathi Trust. I'll post a link in the uh, description. You can also get it with my highlights from archive.org, and I'll post a, um, a link to that. And um, so what is this book? This book is um, an inventory report on the jurisdictional status of federal areas within the states. So the federal government, like it or not, believe it or not, only has power and authority on federal lands in the state. OK, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to like it. You don't. All you have to know is that it's true. Believe it or not, it's true. OK, there's many things written about it, including this book where they do an inventory of all their federal areas and what power they have on those federal federal areas. They have zero power off federal areas. They only have power on federal areas. And there's a variety of um, what they call jurisdictions, which is power and authority over certain areas. So on some of those areas, they have no more power or authority than you or I do over our lands, over our property. So um, they have a rating system to show what jurisdiction, they call a jurisdictional code, they have on these lands. So the legislative status of their properties, that's what this means. This means what, can they, what laws can they pass on what lands they own? Because they can't pass just any arbitrary law on uh, all the lands that they own. Okay, they can make all the laws without state interference on the lands used for military purposes. That's in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. Here again, they have legislative jurisdiction over federal areas within the state. So within the state, they have dependent states. I'm posting a video on that right now. It should be up by the time this video comes out. And what that video says is that Sovereignty starts with the people. They create a state for themselves. Those states create the federal government. The federal government creates smaller states inside those states called federal areas. Okay, that's where they have jurisdiction. That's where they have their lawmaking authority, only on those lands. During the Civil War, that whole idea was um, restructured in the minds of the people, and the restructuring is an absolute falsity. So we need to get back to what the Constitution says and what it really means and not all the BS that you were told it meant. So here they have um, the state page numbers, the key to state codes. So my state 42 is Texas. All the states have a code. They're by alphabetical order. I don't know if this has anything to do with the zip code or not. Um, properties are listed by state, county, and holding agency. Street addresses are given, but cities are identified by code only. City names may be determined from the GSA publication, publication geographical location codes. A supplement at the end of each state shows the counties covered by each multi-county installation included in the listing, but no breakdown of acreage by county is given. So if you have, let's say you have um, a, a city called um, Dallas, okay, now in Dallas, there are small portions of federal lands that the federal government may own or have some sort of jurisdiction over, which they call the city of Dallas or Dallas City also, but not 
including the lands outside of what they own. So the federal government may come and say, we own Dallas, we own Dallas City, but they're not talking about the entire city. They're only talking about the place where they have control over in Dallas City. Also, they call it Dallas City or City of Dallas. That's how the federal government talks. When it talks, it says things in such a way to make you believe that it is in control of all those things when it's actually not because it, it minces words. Okay, so when it says state of Texas, it's not talking about the whole entire territory of Texas. It's talking about the areas of land that it owns inside of Texas. So they have a legislative jurisdiction over federal areas within the state's codes used in type of jurisdiction and citation to legislative authority columns. Page in this book, so look here, we have codes. These are the jurisdictional codes, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna see a form later where they use these codes on the form to designate what type of jurisdiction they have on the lands in the state that creates a dependent state and which is dependent upon the federal government, okay? So I have a video on the independent and dependent states and what's the, what they are and what they mean and how that ties into sovereignty. So watch that video also so exclusive legislative jurisdiction this term is applied when the federal government possesses so this exclusive legislative jurisdiction means that the federal government has all power and authority over that area of land without state interference so the federal government can do whatever it wants on those lands without state interference within the context of the Constitution. It can't do anything outside of the Constitution on those, on those lands. It can't ever do anything outside of the Constitution, period. But there are certain places where they can do certain things and the level gets less and less and less. So being able to do military things that are specified in the Constitution on military lands, they have exclusive legislative jurisdiction, meaning the state outside of them cannot interfere. Okay, so concurrent legislative jurisdiction, that means they have the same lawmaking power as the federal government. Partial, they have some power that the state uh, gave to them, but the state retains the rest of the power. They have proprietorial interests only. They have an unknown jurisdiction. Okay, here's the explanation. The number one through five appearing in the jurisdictional code column indicates the legislative jurisdiction of the acreage listed on the same line in the land columns. Okay, for example, a number one indicates exclusive jurisdiction by the federal government over the area shown in the land column in the same line. Okay, I'm gonna explain that in a minute because there's a form that goes with that. So here we have state statutes, federal law, uh, statutes at large, acceptance or recordation date, and then additional information found in the detailed listing. And you can go through and read this. Like I said, I'm gonna put the links. Um, here's an inventory report on jurisdictional status over federal areas within the states. This is um, page one, authority. Um, the second comprehensive inventory of its nature ever undertaken, okay? The original inventory was in 1957. There's another paper, there's another report that goes along with this. It was started in 1953 by Eisenhower um, by a commission that he put together. The first report was published in 1956. The second part two was in 1957. And that's what it's talking about here, general. The General Services Administration established a central source of information concerning the legislative jurisdictional status of federal properties. Okay, so that is the rule, the laws that they can make on federal lands. So they can make all laws on some federal lands, some laws on other federal lands, a little bit of laws on different federal lands, and no laws on another federal lands or an unknown laws on federal lands. Okay, so only on federal lands, though. It's always in relation to the federal lands. It cannot do anything off federal lands. It has no sovereignty off federal lands. There is nothing ever written anywhere that says the federal government has authority to do anything off the federal lands. Okay, if you find something, um, 
share it with me and I'll prove to you how you're reading it wrong because it was probably written to confuse you. The federal government exercises with respect to the District of Columbia all those powers, judicial, executive, and legislative, which under our federal state system of government are ordinarily reserved to the states. Like authority with respect to numerous other areas within the geographical confines of the states and with respect to residents of such areas. Now, there are some federal lands where there are people, private people, living on those federal lands because when the government when the state gave those lands to the federal government, some people already had um, ownership over those lands. And so those portions of the lands weren't ceded. Okay. So it's like you have the state and then you have federal areas in the state, and then you have private property on some of those areas that were given to the federal government. And there's been a lot of stuff written on whether or not the federal government has authority over those private lands on its federal lands. And um, in that respect, there are some issues with um, controlling private property, but only when it's within the federal lands. So you might see some of those things and um, it might confuse you a little bit as to whether or not the federal government's been given authority over private property. It has not, unless that private property may be situated inside the federal lands. Okay, and that's, I think, where a lot of the confusion comes in because the federal government's turned around and expanded that idea in that um, it pretends that it has all rights over all federal, federal, all private areas, and it does not. Okay, if it did, we wouldn't even have any issues or writings on jurisdiction and it wouldn't be mentioned in the Constitution. The words power and authority would not need to be capitalized in the Constitution because uh, the, the jurisdictions would be um, arbitrary. So they could just do whatever they want. So those words would be uh, common nouns instead of proper nouns. Okay, they're proper nouns because they're specific. There are specific powers and specific authorities on specific places. Okay, so a, a proprietorial interest status only with legislative jurisdiction remaining in the several states. So um, the federal government is given proprietorial interest over some areas in, um, uh, in the states. Not all the lands it was given can it make all laws for. So like parks and wildlife. They're not given um, complete power over um, uh, parks and wildlife. The state retains some lawmaking, lawmaking authority to itself in these areas. So um, for example, let's say that a big, huge 5,000 acre area was ceded to the federal government, but on that area there were maybe a family living there who owned private property. So would they or would they not then be federal or would they still remain with the state? So we have to um, understand those ideas when we're reading things about whether or not the government has jurisdiction over private property. They call them also installations, areas, islands, enclaves, etc. Okay, status of the various federal agencies with respect to the areas under their respective control, jurisdictional status. I'm going to skip down here. You can come back and read this if you want. Public domain. Okay, the public domain are the federal areas. They're under federal control. Federal is uh, public because it's supposed to be transparent. It's supposed to be watched. It's supposed to be looked over. The sidewalks and restaurants and stores are not uh, public. They're considered private, and you still have all your private rights while you're in those areas. Okay, so here's the form. This should be about page 10. Yeah, page 10 right here. So... They used this form back in 1962, and we read probably back in 1957, they did another one of these, um, which was the one before this that they mentioned earlier. And what they do is 
they write, they're, they're trying to inventory their federal lands in all the states to try to figure out what it owns and where it has jurisdiction because we've had Congress and presidents doing all these things for so many years and nobody stopped to ask, well, do we have the right to do all these things on these places or do we not? So they don't. <clears throat> and so what they did was once they realized that they can't just do whatever they want, wherever they want, they started doing these um, inventory reports. Okay, and these inventory reports are filed with GSA, but I think they're also filed with the chief law enforcement officer of the state, which is the attorney general um, of the state that, that you're in, or the state that's in your state, the federal state in your state. So here we would have the state name, the county name, and this would be a federal address because it's federal lands. So the federal lands would have federal addresses. And then they come here, and this is where they write the uh, jurisdictional code. Does it have exclusive jurisdiction? Does it have concurrent jurisdiction, partial? So like this would be uh, a, a military reservation. This would be military lands. Concurrent would maybe be some of the roads. Partial would be uh, national parks and wildlife. Um, proprietorial means that it has no more right than you or I do, meaning it just went and, and purchased some lands and it purchased it as just a person, a regular person, and it has rights the same as you or I. So it might go buy some land inside the state and then put up a federal building and put the FBI in there or the CIA or the NSA or you know, whoever they want to put in there. They can put the um, OSHA offices, the labor offices, all these different places in there, but they actually have no more right on those lands than you or I do. So they can't really arrest you and take you back to those lands. They have to take you, they would have to take you somewhere else. Um, those people that come out of those buildings, they're, they are in service to the federal government, so they don't have any more right than you or I do off those lands. Um, exclusive, even, even the federal officers on the military reservations, they, they have, military officers have no sovereignty at all. They have none. They can't do anything off the federal lands. And they know that. And I knew that when I worked for the government, I worked as, as a military person and I worked as a um, civil servant. And I was not allowed to do anything off the federal lands. However, because I inspected daycares for our military people, sometimes a daycare provider would have a daycare in their home. And because they were giving daycare services to military members, I would go off post and I would inspect their home as a daycare center so that they could get approved and certified through the military depart safety department so that they could provide um, certification credentials to the people bringing their children, which were the military members bringing their children into their home, but off post to be watched over um, as a daycare center provider or as a daycare provider, child care provider. So um, they agreed, okay, and they applied. And so then I would go and I would inspect. But if you don't agree and you don't apply and you don't want to be under that jurisdiction, then they have no authority. And even if you or I, not in the military, went and applied to the military to be under its jurisdiction, it really couldn't do anything because it has no sovereignty. Okay? Same with concurrent. Same with partial. They have no sovereignty. None of these have any sovereignty. So any, any federal officer, FBI... Um, Attorney General, Secretary of State, none of them have any sovereignty off their lands. So they cannot come off their lands and do anything to you without your permission for them to do it. Okay. And even if you gave permission, they still only have jurisdiction on their lands because their lands is where they're limited to. Okay. And then you can read this, um, filling out the rest of the form. And then these forms are filed somewhere. Okay. It appears as though they're filed with the GSA, but I'm thinking they've also got to be filed with the state, either with the um, attorney general or with the um, land office in the state, maybe both. So 
we would know whether or not we come under those laws, okay? Now, if you're on federal lands and you commit a crime, then you leave the federal lands, then they can summons you, and that's really all they can do off the federal lands is summons you. Now, we're told that the state, such as state of Texas, is our state, but it's not, okay? State of Oklahoma, state of Maine, that's a federal, that's, that's the designation for the federal government when it speaks of its own federal areas inside our independent state. And again, you'll have to watch my video on that. Okay, so there's a whole booklet on this and you can go back through here and you can read these and look at all these um, reports and um, think about what it's saying here and think about what it's telling you and um, realize that it doesn't matter what you believe, it only matters what's a fact. And the facts are the federal government does not have sovereignty over the sovereign. We are the sovereign. We are independent. We created it. We must control it. Our job is to control it. We command it. It does not command us. There's no thing in the Constitution that allows the federal government to command the sovereign. They can only command non-sovereign and the non-sovereign are the military and um, itself okay it can command itself but it cannot and it can command the military it can, cannot command above it above it are the states and above the states are the individual people they don't command us it goes it goes down or across okay so check out this book I'll put the links in the description like share subscribe and um, have a great day.